Uh, welcome. This is the first in our new uh, series of uh, brown bag luncheon talks that we call Journalism in the Age of Fake News. Uh, we've all been hearing a lot about fake news lately, so we thought uh, we'd, be, uh, we'd be remiss in not putting on something here. We've got a great team coming up. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to have uh, Ann Kruger from our staff, Professor Ann Kruger, uh, who's going to be talking about some of the things she's doing with cyber news verification. And then the week after that, uh, we're going to have Masato Kajimoto, also on our professor from our staff, who's been working in the area of news literacy for the last several years. And news literacy has just become current now. Uh, come on in, we've got plenty of seats. But uh, I couldn't think of a better way to kick it off than with uh, uh, Professor King Wa Fu, um, the deputy director, <laughs> deputy director of the JMSC, who helps me here a lot. And uh, we, I actually got to know Professor uh, Fu by phone, I think, because we actually talked on it when I was a journalist based in China. And I wanted to get some information on censorship in China. And uh, Professor Fu had the, the uh, Weibo Scope project going on. So I actually ended up uh, talking about Weibo Scope, I think, in the Washington Post before I actually came to JMSC and met him. Yeah. Uh, when I first arrived uh, in se uh, September of last year, 2016, to take over, King Wa was actually at uh, MIT. So I was quite jealous. Uh, he was spending a uh, <laughs> Fulbright year at the uh, uh, MIT uh, Media Lab, right, as a Fulbright Fellow. So we're going to learn a little bit about what he talked about. I can't think of a more exciting time to have been in the U.S. during the U.S. presidential election. So uh, without further ado, the first, the kickoff in our luncheon series, uh, Professor Fu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, so I need to kick it off. First of all, my Great honor to kick off this section. So our JMSC research seminar section. So um, uh, we will have a couple of other uh, uh, section uh, talk in the coming weeks. So we uh, really hope you also uh, can join us. And also one of the thing that I really think is important, and also I want to speak uh, before I start is to, a lot of people think JMSC is just a training journalism training unit, and think we are produce good quality of journalism and teach uh, journalists, but we are not really a, a, a research, academic research unit. But I argue that we are basically, we, are, we have been doing research for years. And we also provide a lot of good quality and interesting results and share to the Hong Kong youth community and also other, other, other part of the world. So um, that try, we, we try to make use of this kind of seminar to engage a broader range of uh, community of HKU and the public. We, uh, we are so glad today we have some people from community uh, in general, not just academia. So that is a good kickoff to start. And also, it's a, also a good thing is a, it's a start, a first research seminar after JMSC become part of the Faculty of Social Science. So, so that is also a great honor to, to kick off this uh, today's section. So, so this is my talk, uh, the name. Uh, basically, as uh, Keith uh, suggests, uh, basically is to report and also share my reflection of the year I spent 10 months last year in uh, MIT Media Lab. And also, during the period of time, uh, I experienced a lot from the, uh, all the discussion, all the things happening well, uh, happened in the uh, U.S. during the election. I lost my chance to vote, cast a vote in Hong Kong Legislative Council. I lost my chance to cast a vote in the election commission committee this early this year in the chief executive election. But basically, I have a new experience to experience the thing in U.S. It is also, I hope it is worth uh, experiencing this uh, uh, in, in the, this year. So, uh, and also because before I start, I also uh, okay two things I will I will share today. One thing I think maybe first half of the talk I would. I, I will um, speak more about the reflection, about my per experience, reflection uh, uh, during the election, about fake news, about media and journalism, and what I, what I, I did in Media Lab. And it's a, basically, it's a kind of uh, making accountability, because I, I, got the, got, I got a 10 months of sabbatical leave. I get half a million dollars support from the government, so I, I think I, I should report back to let a broader range of people understand what I, I have done. So why you take leave for 10 months and what, what I've done? So that's the first thing. The second part of the talk uh, is I will share a, 
a resource finding that I never make it public in the public domain. I, I, re, I, I, I present some of the preliminary finding in the an internal meeting in MIT Media Lab, but this is the first time I make it public, even not yet published. So I'm, I'm basically, uh, it's a very, it's a preliminary data, so I'm, I'm in the process of writing a report, uh, the paper on this, so that, that I will share it in today's section. So before I start, I also I need to mention one thing, is the whole thing, the whole chip, basically supported by the, approved by our GC Hong Kong Senior Research Scholar Award uh, program. This is the, uh, how you make it happen for me to enjoy that uh, 10 months of stay. And also for those students or colleagues who, who are interested in this program, basically this year the deadline is the mid-October. So you can check more detail in the HKU, the research uh, service uh, website. You can find more about the whole program. Okay, so just quickly about uh, this is my uh, uh, couple of pictures. I'm not a good photographer, so they're just a not very nice picture, but they basically show some of my. Uh, okay, sorry, it's one thing I need to show the first uh, uh, the picture. This is the entry, entrance of the media lab. So I took the pictures uh, during a very large uh, snowstorm. Uh, so just you can see the two sides of snow. And I took it at the place where I park my bike. Because basically every day I, I bike 20 minutes from my, uh, my, my place to, to, to the media lab and then park and then I took a picture and then I start to work. So um, you, this is one thing I, I found it amazing. When I first arrived media lab is they don't have a really big a banner or any kinds of uh, signage to show this is Media Lab. I can't find it in the whole building. It's pretty, pretty in, in my opinion, it's pretty low profile. So they don't really show, they, they basically they have the building of architecture, school architecture. They have a small, small um, signage that is Media Lab, but they, they don't have anything to, to show where, 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 the, where, where they are. And, and because a lot of visitors want to take a photo that, oh, we, we, we come here, but they can't find any signage. So this is the one thing that I really think, they, they're pretty pragmatic, they're doing things, they really want to get this thing done, rather than showing all this kind of thing uh, to the public. And yeah, this is the, my, my desk, um, it's my uh, room, I, I, I'm, I'm quite lucky I get a desk and a room in, in Media Lab and then work, and then I, I have a place I can share or work with others. And, and also they display all the work because Media Lab is a place a lot of visitors like to visit. They, basically it's pretty open. Anyone can uh, drop by and they walk around uh, most of the places, most of the places. So basically there are a lot of deep space in the public area to show their work and uh, uh, there's really a lot of very nice um, burn, uh, this kind of poster to show the research result. Even though you don't need to touch, even though you have no chance to talk to the people, basically grab the general idea of the trend. I, I, I basically, I, I did a lot of tour with, with, uh, to my friend, I tour my friends to walk around. And even I just showed all the posters, they, they feel very amazed about all this work. So this is the uh, lab I work, it's a, called the lab for social machine. So basically it's a group of people uh, working about the media and journalism data and also using a lot of um, computer science techniques to look at the development uh, uh, about the uh, election. So there's a couple of reflections. Um, the first thing is the, the values of uh, sabbatical leave, I, of course I, I I have the luxury to enjoy the, 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 the lift, and I really think it's very important for, for a researcher to just get rid of all these kind of teaching duties and administrative duty, and try to start to think and read. I basically, I read a lot, then maybe more than I, I did in the past few years, in, in, in only a, within a 10 month time, I can really sit down to read and follow up with more recent and newer uh, development in the fields. So it really, I, I think it's very important. And I can read, I can take courses. I sit in a lot of courses offered by MIT Media Lab. And also in general, our MIT Media Lab. I even take, I even took uh, a couple of courses in Harvard. Basically it's open and then I, 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 I can sit in and then it, and attend seminar. 
So all in the great uh, Boston area, so basically it's free accessible. So it's a very good hub, in my opinion, that have that chance to engage a lot of different uh, scholars. Uh, one thing is uh, basically I've also built up a very good academic network, so um, I, can, I can engage a Harvard, uh, MIT scholar, Northeastern. Even I uh, just take a few hours flight to go to Atlanta. I, I, I give a talk in CDC at US CDC because I'm part of my part of work is related to public health. That's why oh, CDC, uh, Georgia. Uh, I went to uh, Rochester, New York University. So I also uh, give talk to to them. They basically, is, you can see. It not of course, I did not go to the the um, the West Coast, but not only the East Coast, but basically it's already a very good hub and can make use of the time to engage a large group of uh, scholars within that period of time. And one thing very interesting, I, I you see on the list, I have high school of economics it's in the same universe. So basically the story is I, I gave a talk in New York University and I met a uh, professor at the high school of economics who uh, uh, who is very interested in social media in China. So then we start to talk and then we, we, we've come up with some idea to do a comparison study between Russia and China up on how all the internet policy and internet censorship thing. So then why don't you, uh, you come to, uh, you go to uh, Russia to give a talk. So that I, I did. I, so I, I, I went to uh, St. Petersburg to give a talk in this June. So that, that is also opened up as a lot unexpected. Uh, opportunity to, to engage different parts of the world, not just America. So this is also the good thing about the uh, proof flight. And a couple of things related to um, uh, 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 journalism and media study. Basically because I work in the lab called Lab, uh, lab for Social Machine, and they have the group of people who develop a project to specifically for election, US election. So they make use of their uh, AI technologies, and also they have, or they, they could also have a couple of journalists. They work together to try to make sense of the social media data based on uh, the uh, the election result. Basically, exactly my area of interest. So um, I learned a lot from them uh, how they work on the issue, how they relate to media, and how they engage the journalism. That is one part I think I am amazed. Basically. They, they basically is how, how they work in a very interdisciplinary manner. They have a group of social scientists, computer scientists, and journalists. They work, work together, and the journalists take a very significant part to try to disseminate information to engage the, uh, the mass media. So they, this is a whole thing, how, how can work together on different kinds of discipline to make, get it done. So le uh, learn a new thing, learn a new technology, and also, and one thing is very also I learned a lot is uh, uh, how to define media because I I'm supposed to be a journalism media studies center, but basically in the past we we define media free in a very narrow sense. The, most of the time we talk about media is traditional media or social media, but um, I based on my observation basically in the media they define media is much broader. Way, for example, they consider robot as a kind of media. It's a human computer interfacing. They consider a lot of uh, uh, this kind of driverless car as a kind of uh, uh, communication channel with, between human and, and machine. So I think that um, we should rethink, we, we define what the way what we talk about media right now, and well, we all to stick to the journalism in, in general. So I, I think that give me a lot of new ideas to try to make it by a more broader sense to, 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 uh, to, to broaden understanding about media. So the last thing is very important. It's a whole year, so I don't need to consider all this kind of OAE assessment, what the thoughts are, free side. For those who are not outside, it's outside HKU, you have no idea about all this kind of, but I'm sorry, I don't have time to explain, but this is all kinds of government, uh, with a burden to report to the government about our performance. But I, I'm curious to know, basically in MIT they don't have any assessment at all. They don't have RAE, they don't have four-star free stuff, but they still provide the high quality of world-leading research in the world. So 
how, what can we learn from all this? Can we, basically all this kind of assessment is helping us or basically is to, um, to um, um, making us to can't be a part, big part of the uh, research community. So that is a big part uh, of my uh, research because um, as I said, I'm not just um, engaged within the MIT, I want to engage it broadly in a more uh, bigger community. So of course, during the period of time last year when I arrived uh, uh, Cambridge in early September, basically it's a lot of discussion about all the things related to the election in America. So, so it's a lot of story. So I, I don't need to repeat. There's so many things happening in between when I just first day arrived in uh, America. So, a lot of discussion, so I experienced a lot of things. I, I talk to people, talk to locals, to, to how, how they feel. Every day there's a new story coming up. I can get some in the, uh, immediate feedback from the, my colleagues about a lot of things. Even though I'm not, I was not really an uh, expert in US politics, I, I learned another new thing. Basically, a lot of people, they mentioned, I have no idea. I need to go back and check Wikipedia and check all the records to see all the things happen. But this is the process that I explore. And the, the, the picture at the uh, left side, basically, in my apartment, I, this is my first time to watch a couple of this kind of live uh, debate in America. So uh, it's, it's pretty entertaining, especially because we have, we have very entertaining uh, president uh, candidate uh, or, or in the panel. So that is it, a, it's a, it's a learn that has a new, very different experience. I, I did I did not uh, do this before, and I I did only uh, in Hong Kong this kind of relatively boring debate, but it, it, it's a, it's a it's quite a quite um, new experience that I never experienced to learn. But but one of the other things that I I also because I watch uh, a lot of TV <laughs> during the whole years. Well, much more than uh, the time I spent in my past few years because it, because the election, so I have a debate and also a lot of comedy, a lot of comedy is related to the election. So it's interesting. There's a lot of people think last year is the dark time of journalism, but I argue basically it's a golden time of television. Last year, if you check the um, this is a pro basically in the right side is a. Uh, a, a snapshot of the program called Saturday Live, uh, Saturday Night Live. Basically, last year the Saturday Night Live achieved the highest rating ever in the past 20 years because of the election. Because of it, basically, I, every Saturday night in 11:30, I basically I just sit in front of the TV and watch the whole show. It's it's so entertaining, and, and it is basically you can see the Anne Bower and also Kim. Uh, Kate McKinnon, basically they just win the Emmys Award two days ago because of their performance in the Saturday Night Live show. So this is a very interesting thing that also I, I, I just start to think whether or not they are doing journalism too. But even though they are storytelling, they are excellent storyteller, com comedian, excellent story, but they, then we are not classified them as journalists. But they are, they are doing a very good job in telling story that can appeal to a very large amount of audience. So um, this is a, this is also my experience about it. Okay, let's talk about the, today's more uh, the, um, the the topic about fake news uh, because I think because our title basically it, it, it maybe a lot of uh, audience today basically come here because of the fake news thing. So that's why maybe I need to start to to reflect on on all this. I keep using, if you pay attention to detail, you can see even in the title of the, today's talk or the bigger titles of the, the series, basically we put pull a quote uh, uh, of, uh, or in front of or behind the fake news. So basically it's, it's our, it's my, at least it's my intention to make, it is still a very fluid and uncertain, unknown idea. And also there's basically a lot of people talk about it, but basically no one really define and understand what exactly about. So I still right now I still think is 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 that unclear concept. I will explain in a minute. So um, for example, I I quote one of the report uh, produced by a group of Harvard and uh, Northeastern scholar 
So um, combating fake news, basically they provide an agenda, what, what the academia need, need to do to try to uh, uh, counter all this thing about fake news thing. Basically, he, he'll define fake news as misinformation. So you have incorrect information, they have something uh, uh, inaccurate, this is what they call the fake news. But wait a minute, uh, we taking her head up in my head as a former journalist, we all understand, in, even in a lot of uh, professional journalists, basically we get, we make mistakes. Basically, we, we also report something in mistake. We basically make a lot of correction. You, if you go online, you, you can find even Washington Post, New York Times, make a lot of correction every day. So there are a lot of inaccurate issue related to reporting. We can, the whole story has a lot of details. You have 10 or 20 different facts, but perhaps one or two relatively minor things, you can get the fact totally wrong. That's possible. And also, it's, it, it, it's also a process of journalism that we try, but something because of the deadline, we cannot make everything done. But with the main idea is correct and go ahead because of the public interest issue. So, so that's why it's, it's not right just talk about whether or not it's correct or not correct to define. So a lot of people just say, no, just mis in a way, it's disinformation. So that's people when they intentionally try to uh, deceive people. That is the fake news. Then the, the, then become another bigger question. So how can we know the people the motive to uh, de decept you or to try to uh, do something for 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 uh, for, for intentionally to, to, to deceive you? So it's 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 very hard to define. No one can say. So that means it's based on a lot of people their own judgment. So you think it's a fake news, this is fake news. Or some people have power, say you are the fake news, then you become a fake news. So I think it's a lot of the conceptually is unclear right now. And I don't have an answer yet, but I, I, at least I can raise a lot of questions that how we can make sense of the, of the fake news thing uh, in this era. And also one thing is um, very important is um, uh, a lot of people uh, connect uh, fake news to propaganda in the current uh, era. And actually, propaganda is not necessarily get the uh, facts wrong. Basically, every single word in the propaganda is correct, but they are just an imbalanced and biased presentation of the fact. They miss out a lot of things. They, you can read every single word right, but you miss out something. So, so that means it, it, it also related to intention. How, how, why you uh, report, or how you create a report, and um, ho also who, hi, uh, who, who make this report on this? So um, that all linked to the very fluid and clear idea of fake news. I also encourage that more discussion on this to try to make sense of what we call the fake news, uh, uh, in a way. Oh, and also one thing is. Um, in the second, uh, in the second paragraph, a lot of fake news basically is basically linked to my research uh, in the in the second part. It's it, this is fake news, but how, who made the fake news rise spread? This is the one of the key questions we, we should ask because when we uh, see a news story, we are unclear about the uh, quality of the reporting. But if people are still using social media to like it or engage it, that will make it widespread. You say that there will be more chance to post on the other people's uh, news feed, uh, or, or you can create a lot of um, uh, attention. So that relates to human uh, the behavior. How you make use of the social media, and social media basically it build up a way to we will trust because if that post is uh, made by your friends, you're more likely to become, hey, this is a quality, credible information, and then you're more likely to uh, send out. That, that creates all this thing uh, about the, so that, that, that in short, basically, fake news is not a new thing. It's over the years, a lot of this kind of issue in the journalism is not new. But the only new thing that also researchers should do more thing on it is to look at the connection with social media, I think. This is one of the 
major agenda that I, I'm, I'm working on this area now. So, but everything that if interact with politics, that make it complicated. Um, this is the mo one of the most cited tweet last year. I, I think one of the most representative uh, tweet last year by the one of the most uh, ever um, uh, U.S. president who, who, who loves social media and tweet uh, frequently on this. This is the one representative um, tweet. Basically, it's, it, it's, a, it's a people with power. Right now, they make use of social media to try to denounce uh, the quality of the uh, traditional journalism, make use of this. So it, it, uh, they, they say, oh, this is the fake news. New York Times, Washington Post, oh, sorry, no Washington Post, no, New York Times, ABC, CNN. These are the, the, these are the media uh, uh, critici uh, are criticizing uh, Trump over the long period of time uh, during the election. So he, he selectively pick up this kind of, they, 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 they use their enemy, enemy of the United States. There's a pretty, I think also this is a number one populist appeal a statement ever in the last year, whole year. To try to make the media become the enemy of the state. So this is the, the, the thing that makes it very complicated. Use, so when you say fake news, that, that I also raise a question. When you use fake news, who determine this is fake news? Is it proof of power or who, uh, or, or which different political ideologies who, who make the decisions so to determine this? is also uh, very uh, important things. And also one thing that also on my re reflection is because I have been doing uh, research uh, on China internet policy over years. So basically, uh, it's maybe new to America, but basically in China, they ha China have uh, done a lot using the state power to denounce uh, public information. They denounce, this is rumors. So they create a lot of different systems to define this is rumor, this is not right, this is correct. But even though at the land of the day they find this is, this kind of message uh, are right. But basically it's a big user of using this skill is in China. So that also make me uh, rethink. This is a lot of connection between the, this, this strategy that using uh, denouncing fake news or denouncing rumors. That basically we can find the same strategy in, in other parts of the world. So if we can, it, is it fake news whole thing is so unclear, so how can uh, we start to work on this. So I take a more pragmatic and uh, approach. So I use, I define fake news as the way of th those information that based on the fact checking mechanism, they found that they are not, they are fake. They're not uh, news, uh, correct news story. So that's also, it's a very important thing about a group of um, media who uh, work uh, closely with Facebook. And when people find some of the posts on Facebook are uh, uh, questionable, they, they create disputes. And then that some of the fact checker in the media, uh, media company, they, they, they try to fact check. And then you find out this kind of uh, website basically produced large scale of um, fake story that, that they, they marked, they tap, they, they are the fake, fake news site. So based, basically based on this, uh, important, this definition define the, the coming others works. And also that is also show, it's very important for the journalists to do fact checking. So that's why I encourage all to attend the next week, uh, the, the speech by uh, Ang uh, uh, Kruger uh, on the, all our work on the fact checking in, in Hong Kong. So that is my definition. So you can see all the sites basically is provided by the Polit, uh, uh, Polit Facts. This is a website who work with uh, Facebook to define this is, these are the fake news sites. So they can see a lot of uh, sites, they already define as a fake news or, uh, or different. So you can see the name look pretty legitimate. So you can see the uh, abcnews.com.co. This sounds like ABC News, but basically it's a fake news site. So you can see more as a 
A, a News 24.org, it, it sounds pretty like uh, American News 24 hours, but basically these are the fake news sites. So, so they define a list of 200 some um, uh, story, uh, uh, sorry, website that basically in the coming, uh, the next step of this, uh, uh, of the, of the, um, the next uh, part, second part of the research um, of the talk is about my research. I would use based on this definition to define fake news. So the whole idea about, okay, now I start the part about uh, my research at the media, uh, uh, media lab, what exactly I did, and, um, uh, and how we will relate all about fake news things. So the rationale behind the study is um, when I, uh, I talk about last year, basically most of the people working in the area about social media and politics and also we had the fake news journals, so basically most of the people in America at least, they work on Twitter. Because they, they think, this, because Twitter they are relatively easy access, and also it's, it's people, basically a lot of people use this as, as a way to understand all the things related to politics and, and journalism in, in America. But, but the issue is, based on research, most of the majority of American population, they receive news, from social media, 44% uh, basically from on Facebook. Come on Twitter, less than 10%. So then we, we, we can question a lot of research right now we already published in the literature. Basically it come from a platform that only used by less than 10% of the American population. So I think there's a really big research gap to see a bigger pictures of what exactly is going on in the general public to, 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 uh, to understand. So that's why I focus my work on Facebook and also I'm fortunately, I come, I come from Hong Kong and Hong Kong basically Facebook is a dominant uh, social media platform here. And starting in 2014, because of the umbrella movement, I uh, have been involved in a lot of work looking at the social media and Facebook and politics and, uh, and things. So that's why I have a lot of experience to work on uh, Facebook platform. So that's why we, we found a, a synergy and uh, with the media lab. So I work on the Facebook thing. So they focus on more on the Twitter things. So um, you, you, can, you can see uh, last year when um, after the election, a lot of people start to bring Facebook because they think Facebook, oh, you create a lot of what they call echo chamber, what they call the uh, uh, filter bubble. They basically, they make the like my people cluster and they share only those t information they, they like to read rather than they can explore a bigger, different opinion in the general social media uh, 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 universe. So that, that's why the people start to bring Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg right after the election he initial response, his initial response was to say, hey, we did some internal study. We can't find any impact on the people. Still, they can use, uh, they can enjoy a lot of different opinion on, on Facebook. But after a while, he changed a little bit of uh, his uh, uh, stand. He issued a new statement called Build Global Community. And he starts to, to make it open, he said, he, ha he worry about the uh, filter bubble issue. And, but of, of course, he also worry about the sensationalism uh, in the social media. So that, that makes the whole thing about me. me basically, uh, Facebook is also need to face the issue about what exactly is now is going on. Even though there's not a lot of research we really can tease out what exactly is happening, but it's very important. And no one really bring Twitter. It, it also shows there's a big gap between, a lot of people understand this is an important platform, but there's very few research is in this area. So basically that comes up a couple of um, um, uh, research um, objectives. So I don't think I have time to go through everything. I can talk another one hour. So, but I think because today the main thing about fake news. So I will show mainly about the fake news uh, that part result to you. So for detail, uh, if you want to ask, so you can stay and then we can email me for details about all the details. So I, I want to keep 
at least a 10 to 15 minutes for Q and A. So that's why um, I I I will focus more on about on the last objective that to evaluate the extent of spreading fake news between different community. But uh, the first two, I just quickly go through it uh, of this. So uh, th that I collect the data. So I, I use the same approach I, I did in Hong Kong. So um, I, I, I use what you call it, snowball sampling approach. So the idea is I select some of the initial seek. So based on the initial seek, I found another set of pages related to the initial seek, and then do another step to, 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 to get another level of seek. For example, in, at, at the very beginning, I have nine uh, initial seek pages. Uh, Washington Post, New York Times, or, 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 or another ABC News. This is media. And other three are right wing, another three are left wing uh, uh, pages. So uh, initially we have nine, and then after one uh, uh, from uh, height, uh, from one one degree of uh, of snowball uh, sampling, uh, we increased from nine to sixty nine pages, and then another uh, level. So we uh, come to three thousand, another if we come ninety thousand. So we, we basically we use this kinds of uh, snowball sampling. Uh, way we, we create a sample of 90,000 pages. So the, the idea is when the one page share another page, I include another page into the sample. So that, that we based on this way, we create 90,000. And also we just look at America. So we, we based on the, the profile of the page, we just include those uh, from, from America. So these are the, all the data I get, uh, the content, how many, how many like count, how many count, all these things that uh, included. So we get create a, uh, a sample, and then we uh, we check our study uh, period is three months before the election. So that we create a um, network, basically is have 52,000 nodes. That mean, you can imagine, I, I will show you the network in a minute. So basically you can you will see the connection of different pages, but I use a node to represent the pages, and use an edge to represent the sharing between two pages. So that we create a, a, a network with 52,000 and 462,000 uh, edges of this, uh, of this uh, Facebook page sharing. So this is the, uh, the diagram to show the, the connection. Uh, it, you see every single dog basically is a page. Uh, and the distance between that, the, uh, the node basically is how closely share with each other. When two nodes share with each other more, they come closer. So, or in other words, when one page, New York Times are more likely to share New, uh, Washington Post. They tend to be in the same direction of agreeing on certain kinds of, uh, of issue, so that they come closer. So that, I make use of this idea to define what I call the community. They communicate frequently during the period of time of election. So you can see a lot of color here. So basically color represent the, uh, I, will, I will show it in a minute, it's a, the political ideologies of the group. The red basically is a group of people closely connect with Donald Trump. And the blue is a community uh, mostly connect with Hillary Clinton. And the green is the a group of community of pages closely related to um, uh, Bernard Sanders. And the yellow one is media, it's general uh, traditional media. And the, and the pink one basically is, is nothing to do with politics. It's just those uh, spiritual, um, fun video uh, types of um, uh, uh, things. So, that I want to show you, because this is not a very good way to show, because everything is a two dimension. So I asked one of the students in um, Media Lab and create a three dimensional visualization of this diagram, and that I think is a much better way to look at the connection. So now you can see the red 
Okay, let me try again. So red basically is those uh, Trump related pages and the uh, blue another in, at the bottom that are those by uh, Hillary Clinton and also green is uh, the Sanders. So um, one take home message about this is the, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, close, close it first. Um, one take home message of, of this uh, is basically Trump, the red one, basically a much closer caster than the others. So based on the visualization. So, um, and also we can have some data to support it. But basically, visually, you can find that they are more a closer cluster. That, in other words, basically they just share with each other rather than they share with the other community with different political ideologies. But for the others, tends to be much um, integrate into other community. So you can see they are mixed together with the others. So just based on the uh, visualization, you did, this is one take message from this. Um, so, so, so I, I need to skip. Basically, these are all the data about each individual community. This is the uh, red one. The top is Fox News. It's not surprising. Second is Donald Trump. Uh, Mino is one of the uh, uh, right wing blogger in America. Uh, uh, Bright Bright is one of the most popular all right uh, uh, online media. So these are all majority of this community basically come from the right wing uh, uh, community, right wing uh, media. Blue one, these are the um, uh, Hillary Clinton. You can see on the in the fourth uh, rank based on the connection, how many times of they share. So these are the Occupy Democrat, the New York Times. Uh, Washington Post, these are more uh, closely linked uh, with the blue community, which is the um, uh, Hillary Clinton's community. So for the green is uh, Sanders one, is the uh, Archer's era, it's the top one. And uh, you can see uh, quite a number of others. Uh, uh, some of them I even I don't know what exactly about, but these are come from the data to find out the top pages that's closely linked. Uh, to the, the center. So I skip some of them. So I, I, I did some reality check. So because it is entirely using computer to determine, it doesn't sound right because who knows it really reflect the real life uh, ideology. So that I, I did a reality check. I found another uh, third party sources who, this is a, a journalist who created a diagram to try, try to classify different media into more conservative, more liberal, uh, it's along a spectrum. So then I, based on that spectrum, I handpick all the uh, notes, all the pages into the diagram. So you can see, roughly speaking, you can see separate into the red or blue in, in the two camps. So I think that means that using this uh, entirely computational method, you, you, you basically can really separate those uh, pages with different political ideologies. Okay, so then I need to skip this. Basically, more statistics to show the changes of volume over time of different community. So uh, it is interesting to see uh, the red one. Basically, is uh, all the volume uh, of posts created by the community over time, back to 2008 election. So you can see at the time of 2008, basically you can see 90 percent of the posts created by the. Uh, liberal or right, uh, left-wing community, but it's only less than 10 percent, or even less than single digit. But over time, during the period of time of the emerging of the Tea Party, and that come uh, uh, grown up to almost 40 percent or 50 percent. But after the Occupy Wall Street uh, uh, campaign, it dropped down to uh, a quarter, and then it start to grow up a lot during the election. Then, then come to the point of 2016, that basically uh, 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 among almost 50% of the volume. That means during the election time, that basically half of the volume uh, of, the, of, the, of the Facebook uh, post among pages, basically based on my sample, we created by the red uh, community. So, 
So what? The, okay, look, I skip all this. But what's the point? So what? He, how is linked to fake, fake news? So now I classify all into different community: red, blue, green, and other traditional media. So I want to check the extent of each community, the extent of how many of the link they share the fake news site. So that, does it make sense? Because I already classify these as the fake news site. I already classify these are the different community. I then I check the proportion of each community, the percentage of they share on the list, are confirmed to be a fake news site, the percentage. So this is a so this is a result I get. Is these are the four different community: red, blue, green. Uh, media is traditional media. So the number link of the uh, fake news site basically is 131,000 uh, of, of red and 18,000 blue, 15 of green. But this doesn't make sense to look at the actual number, look at the percentage. So then I create a percentage, basically the number of fake news site link URL over the total number of the, of the page or link they share over the period of time. Not, not the Facebook link, it's just the URL. That for the fair comparison. That I found almost one out of 16 URL share by the red community basically uh, classified, were classified at the fake news site. And for the blue, it's, it also not, it's also 1.7%. That means around, around um, uh, one out of 50. So uh, a fake news site. So um, green also, but a little bit lower, but the media is the best. One out of eight hundred. So you can see the extent of the sharing of this questionable quality uh, website information during the election uh, within the, all the different political community within this period of time. So I have more details to look at the, the, the detail, but I don't, I don't have time to go for it. But this is a basic idea. But you, you would argue that, hey, it, what, what do you mean? How can I know is, it, is important? So, because one of the important thing is when a fake news story get people like, uh, do people like the fake news site or also comment on it? Basically, how the widespread of the story. Because the, uh, the new feed are growing from a face basically based on this all to calculate the, the popularity. If you like it, if you big comment, basically they think this important story, they would widespread. So the point is, a lot of people like or engage with all, all this kind of story, that create a widespread of things. This is the human, of course this is, can be a robot, but this is a lot of human involvement within it. So then I look at all this kind of, uh, fake news story, the number of likes uh, by the others. And to be fair, I did a comparison. So I compare the number of likes of those fake news story and to compare to the same site and those share are not the fake news story. Okay, that, that's I create what we call a case control comparison. Case means these are all the fake news story, the number of like, and the control are those uh, post of sharing the URL in the same pages but are not classified as the fake news. So that make, makes sense because we, we, we can do a fair comparison. So we are talking about the same thing and compare whether or not the fake news site get more attention or engagement than the non-fake news site. So that we, we, do, uh, we did this comparison and by different color, basically different community and then you can share. This is a block plot. This is a, a bit statistic. But you can see basically the box basically is represent the first quartile to the third quartile. And the, and the bar in the, in the middle basically is the median. So you can just quickly you can see the median level to show uh, in general basically all the, case, all the cases here get a higher bar than the control in terms of median. So that, that, in other words, basically I, I did some statistical test on it, basically all significant. And basically in general, the fake news site get more like and like and comment from the 
uh, from the user, then those URL are not classified at the fake news site. So that means basically human process tends to be a important driver of all the widespread of the fake news. So you can't just bring the, the sources. You are, we, maybe we are also the process to drive all this widespread of the story uh, over time. Okay, so um, I want to stop now because even though I have a lot of things I can share, but I want to keep maybe uh, five or ten minutes for, for question. So please, any, anything, uh, question? about my talk or about Fruplay, about Media Lab. Uh, so, how do you take into account the fact that uh, some of the big people are actually paid for news? So, on the red side, you see lots of big news stories because they are boosted by person or people who yeah. actually pay mm. for that to appear more often in the yeah. yeah. That should be reflected on this other, right? How do you mm. Yeah, but yeah, thank you, thank you for question. Yeah, but I I don't have any uh, data that can prove uh, this kind of link basically uh, paid by some others. Basically, I I just compare a list of um, um, classified of uh, fake news site and then compare the URL provided by the data to see the linking. But I I have no idea about but, but whether or not. One side no. has far more number of fake news appearing on the timeline that mm. shows as the absolute numbers of in your child. Mm. So I was wondering how do you sort of then reconcile this intentional spread of fake news to begin with mm. before you do this analysis? Mm. Um, I, I yeah, I I, I have no yeah. idea about how 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 it construct it. From, from from the data, but um, yeah, but um, I, I I don't have an answer of all this because um, I just basically just using the data to, to, to make sense. But uh, there's a lot of possible interpretation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it, it, it's um, first of all, it basically uh, the data, basically data has a limitation. I just based on a third party to define the fake news site, and I can't say all the news on the fake news site they are fake. So that, I, I can't. I, I can even I, I know that's data because it's a very difficult process to do it, and it's possible there's some really generous uh, news story on the fake news site. And also, a lot of generous pages may also generate fake news, but that is not included in this study. But that is a legitimate question to ask. Yeah. Any good fake news site should include some truth. Sorry? Any good fake news site should include some truth in this report. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah, that is pretty possible. All this, but so that's why we we cannot really look at the. Uh, the, um, from the very micro level, we, we can only just look at the macro level because if we, we can compare every single com, uh, community community have the same limitation. Every possibility of sharing uh, within the different uh, ideology. So if we can just look at the aggregated level to analyze the data. Any question? Yeah, yeah th thank you. Yes, it's, uh, it's an excellent question, and also I really want to answer it. But the problem is because the engagement basically, basically comes from the individuals. That means the individual Facebook account, and basically I, I cannot access the individual data. Basically, it's a private, this is all the public things you can find. It. But the, I, I can test if this account really is a, also a rock block account, but basically I can't access this. I only can see their name. But I, I have no idea about what, what exactly about. That's the sort of the, the, the problem that I, I can't address some of the, this kind of engagement is where they come from. Um, so it, it's, yeah. Aware of anyone who's come up with some sort of methodology of, of 
it basically is possible. It's, it, for first, Facebook Corp can do it, of course. Second, uh, uh, basically it's some work around, but it needs a lot of resources to, to work. For example, uh, uh, basically, we, I can redo the whole study, but I have more resources to allow a lot of different computers to, to do the data crawling, and perhaps that is the possibility to get the data. They didn't come in. Mark Zuckerberg. He, he initiated a study to look at all these reports. They, they, they can do it. But, they are, but, but for external researcher, uh, basically, we have a lot of uh, limitation. But yeah, it's an excellent question. Thank you. Do you see any similarity in Hong Kong? Um, excellent do question. You Thank see you. No, basically, we, we happened in 2014. Uh, basically, one of the study, um, um, it's not about fake news. Uh, it's, it's, okay, well, okay, sorry, back, back to the question about fake news. You, you mean, I, I don't know, I can't see a very widespread of fake news right now in Hong Kong. If at least, uh, no one really classify some of the sites at the fake news site, based on my but if you, if you ask the question about if fake news is not about incorrect information, but about partisan and pretend to report a generous news story, but basically they come with a political motivation, I think yes, it's over past few years. We can see during the uh, during the Occupy movement, during the election, there's a lot of people. It sounds like they are a campaign using social media. Social media open platform. All the people can make use of this to create new uh, media sites and t they tend to be come up to be a part of the campaign to disseminate information but um, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't say this is a really a, fake, a large scale of fake news widespread in, in, in Hong Kong. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Is it because Hong Kong is smaller and yeah. check things out easier? Yeah, I think it's it part of the reason, it, it, yeah, it's, it's it's small, it's easy to check different kinds of information. So um, that, that may be the reason. Is it more of how we have fake organizations making real news? Yeah, that, that, that may be possible. Thank you. Yeah, that, yeah because you, you want to create a fake organization easy. You can just create a page with n n not, 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 you just, well, basically, sometimes people, what, what they call the content farm, they pack, we package a lot of information and package a sunset new story and then disseminate it and frame it in the way that in, uh, in, in, in line with their political ideology. That, that, that I, I, I see a lot. But basically, I, I agree, there's no systematic study on, on this in, in Hong Kong. Maybe correctly, it's too small and hard to publish, right? It's very hard to publish in four star journal. It's just look at Hong Kong, right? Hi. And in particular, you're being a very good neutral kind of objective scholar, but to what extent do you think fake news is a horrible phenomenon and, and Facebook should be held accountable? Oh, thank you. And I say that in also, I think yesterday, the Daily New York Times um, <laughs> reported that Facebook received a search order on the paid Russian fake news oh, yeah, yeah. material. Yeah. And they were receiving that in violation of U.S. law in rubles, but claimed that they didn't know it was Russian, even mm. though they're receiving the, the currency of rubles. Mm. So, okay. I guess thank you. Thank you. Excellent question. I, I'm, I'm, because I'm not an American, I'm a bit, maybe a bit cynical. So, I, I thought um, a lot of people after the election, they, they tried to soul searching for the part. Why? What happened? This is basically a book of the Hillary Clinton's new, new book. What happened? A lot of people ask the same thing about what happened. So then, during this, this soul searching process, and they try to bring a lot of people. The everything basically come up with a positive theory. They start to stick to that theory. And Facebook basically is among the list of, of, the, um, of, of the people uh, can bring. And another one is collusion with Russia. 
basically, yeah, I agree. This is a lot. Some data can show uh, Russia, uh, Russia basically uh, brought a lot of advertisement on the social media, but basically, it's no evidence. I mean, I'm too cynical. There's no really hard evidence to show the uh, the collusion between uh, the the Trump administration and Russia. It, it, there's a lot of things happening. I, I, I don't see it. The first one is the opinion poll. This is another people. A lot of people bring the opinion public opinion poll. They did the bad job to predict. I don't know, so to forecast what happened. And recently, uh, American Society of Public Opinion Research basically released a press release to try to counter this. They think, oh, still opinion poll is free, it's still good. It's just some methodological issue about it. So, I think in the whole process after election, a lot of people, including Facebook, basically uh, targeted to try to explain for for, for the issue. I, I don't think it's one single issue to 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 that cause the, the thing about fake news about. Uh, uh, echo chamber and also the uh, Trump, this, uh, the 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 sets. That there's a lot of different factors behind it, and I don't think really Facebook is the major one. It's part of the uh, formula, but it's a lot of things. Basically, we, based on the research, we are also a part of the process to spread. Fake news. Of course, there's a possibility. These are not real. This is basically it's a robot. I, I can't. I, I don't know. But um, but um, I, I guess a lot of people basically. That's why also part to, part of the study. You need to build up the new necessity. We, we not just don't make us become a part of the process. We don't spread fake news. Basically, it help to stop the right spread of it. So that's why we need to build build the. I can't answer the question, but this is my, my take. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. What's the motivation I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, I don't know. But basically, um, you need to register a domain it's pretty easy. You, you, I think you, you know. It, it, it's just an address or just a registered company. That, that they, they can just, uh, you can, online you can buy it, basically. I think they just randomly buy a lot of companies. It doesn't matter where it's at. Provided that, no one can find it. Then it's okay. So that's why you can see a lot of different Thing. I don't really know it really the real address, but but I, I'm sorry, I have no idea. Any other question? If there's no, thank you so much for your attention and and hope and wish uh, we can go on our next uh, talk next week. Next right. thank, thank you. Thank you. Definitely next week we'll learn what you can do about fake news. <laughs> through the Cyber News Verification Lab. That'll be next Tuesday, and then the following Wednesday, we'll have uh, Masato talking about how you can educate yourself to <laughs> discover fake news and learn with news literacy. So thanks all for coming, and uh, come back and visit us again here in LA Hall. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.